I know, I know, it's been forever, I'm sorry. Sometimes you get a little tired of playing Blood, which I did after postmortem. Thankfully, this one isn't such a giant pain in the ass. Cryptic Passage is an expansion developed by Sunstorm Interactive, the people behind other build game expansions. Duke It Out in DC, Duke Caribbean, the Shadow Warrior expansion, Want and Destruction, Pro Wang Want and Destruction, Wen Civi. And most of these are fine, except that one infamous level from Duke It Out in DC. Maybe we'll get to it one day. And I'm gonna make a good faith gesture today by playing it in Fresh Supply, where there's only like two texture bugs and the damage system still seems a little off sometimes, which you might think makes it easier. Another thing about Fresh Supply that threw me off, the FOV slider. It's a nice touch. Still messes with me because the increased field of view makes it seem like you're going faster. I'm glad to have it though, it's kinda nice. Caleb has traveled to the Carpathian Mountains to find an ancient scroll that could upset the balance of dark powers, blah blah blah, kill all these goons. Cryptic Passage does start off bad. The first level boat docks is fine, and like a lot of the maps in here is really cool and atmospheric, here's the problem. Get a shake. Did you catch him? A single shotgun cultist where you start dropping right into the water. We've discussed why swimming hit scanners in this game are a nightmare scenario. This one starts right up with it, but only on well done. You gotta go under the dock and pick up some remote bombs if you want to have any hope of dealing with them quickly to get some of the other underwater secrets. One-eyed bastard. The first couple of levels of this were the hardest part. Thank God you get all these flares pretty early. You won't have a lot of napalm ammo for a while, so this is your best option. Whose idea was it anyway to give this secondary fire to the flare gun? I imagine it makes the cultists feel like they're getting unfairly treated, sort of like... me. The locations in this episode are cool. You get to visit a lighthouse that's... probably the hardest part of the episode. They give you guns akimbo right here, that's only helpful after you deal with these guys over here. And even then... And toss a bundle down here. And then toss a bundle here. And then get up here, and sacrifice some health for some gasoline. I suspect there's a Tesla cannon in a secret somewhere. I don't play Cryptic Passage that much, so I don't know. The first couple levels always turn me off. Hit skin or hell. Ammo was never really a problem, I was flush with bullets and shells for most of the episode. The second map, Old Opera House, another fantastically atmospheric soul crusher. You got Tommy Gunners here, and Shotgunners here. Really around every corner is the possibility for instant death. I'm sure the designers were like, hey, they're the lowest tier enemies, right? This is probably a lot easier on Lightly Broiled, I wish I could bring myself to play it on that again. When you enter the Opera House, look to your left. That's a reflective shot's power-up. Grab it and go nuts. I love having reflective shots. You don't have to worry about being skilled or quick or anything, really. Come on, come on. The Opera House, as you'd expect, has a lot of Phantom of the Opera references. Classy, right? 
like these secret passages that are also full of cultists? Nah, you're not safe in secrets. Again, the atmosphere, just incredible. Sunstorm really nailed it. Oh, few boos from the gallery, I see. Is Exorcist 3 too deep a cut because that's actually a good movie? Is this not gothic enough? How about a gothic library? There are a lot of hard-to-see switches you'll need to find, and Fresh Supply helps with that by making everything voxels. This is where Cryptic Passage gets easier. Fewer hit scanners, except this. Yeah, there's actually more pick up a thing and monsters spawn in this episode. The original Blood episodes didn't really have a lot of that. They didn't need it. It's more of a Duke Nukem Shadow Warrior kind of thing. And when that's over, the game spawns one Hellhound. One? <laughs> one Hellhound. What is this, still kicking? I even leave this level with full health. Yeah, Cryptic Passage gets way easier when it stops throwing waves of cultists at you in every room. Wait, nobody? Is it my birth- oh, fuck! <laughs> this is just comfy now. Oh, that's an obvious trap. Oh no. Spiders. I'm not sure Sunstorm truly understood how Blood's enemies worked. They barely even tossed Shiog at ya. Okay, maybe they do. However, this here, this is a Shadow Cloak. It's a power-up that does nothing. There's a couple pickups in Cryptic Passage that are technically in Blood, but never used, like the Medicine Pouches, which are just more health. The Shadow Cloak still does nothing. It's in the original episodes once, you just can't pick it up. It's a prop. Look how, look how spooky it is. Oh look, doggos! Next up is one of those classic build engine levels that takes place on a vehicle. Like Phantom Express or, uh, uh, I guess Airplane from Want and Destruction, which was also Sunstorm. Anyway, cool map, well done. I don't know what a riverboat like this is doing around the Carpathian Mountains in, like, 1930, but I don't know, whatever, it's cool. Zombie coming out of a toilet? Check. Well done Jurassic Park reference? Check. Is that also a thing from Want and Destruction? I've seen it in another build well, game. Hey, Hi, Cancer Mouse. Been a while since you let me do something educational on the show, Simmy. Do we have to? It actually has something to do with something the kids enjoy. Star Wars! Oh, no, we're not doing Dark Forces yet. The Last Jedi! Uh... 
And that's how Hollywood Once you clear is the boat of cultists, it's off to the graveyard, or rather... No, women. I told you it's about the money. It's always about the fucking money. I'm sick of hearing about Star Wars. Once you clear the boat of cultists, it's off to the... You... what? By this point, I have more napalm and explosives than I do shotgun shells. <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't just jump into a fireplace, but this is the secret exit to Boggy Creek. God, I'm still not used to all these voxels. Boggy Creek's another level with a cool atmosphere, but it's cakewalk. Yeah, don't think I can't see you there. <laughs> Gilby's on land? Not a problem, even if there's this many. Oh boy, a spooky basement with spider webs and one mother spider. Honestly, this is a breeze compared to other episodes. The hardest part is at the end with these two fanatics. Next up is Mountain Pass, probably the only level I don't care for. It's not bad per se, it's a little undercooked in places and also easy. There's a lot of waiting around. And this trap is a joke. I mean, come on. If the rest of your level is too easy, just throw some rapid fire hit scanners at the end. Yeah, fool me once. Do you see all this napalm ammo? Ah, okay, the abysmal mine. It's a little more what I expected. Oh yeah, that's the herd I'm looking for, thanks. In these last few levels, there are life seeds all over the place. Like three or four in a level. I'm not sure if Sunstorm didn't understand Blood's mechanics or if they understood them too well. I'm basically maining the napalm launcher now. It's just what I've always wanted. But I don't know, it feels wrong to be so unstoppable in Blood. Here's a fun fact about Blood Fresh Supply. They rewrote all the collision stuff. I'm not enough of a build purist to say that that's a bad idea, because it's not. This sucks. It still leads to some weird stuff. I saved this gun's akimbo for whatever's behind this door. It's the end of the level. I've never played this on Well Done, so it's gonna be a... It's one hellhound. Okay. Finally, a big spooky castle. This is Transylvania, after all, isn't it? Oh, hey, Chiog, it's been ages, bro. Where you been?
swear, they designed this like it was some regular shooter, trying to mitigate blood's overall cruelty, but is it even blood if it isn't constantly punishing me? Don't worry, because now it's like a mini boss rush with one mother spider. Sure, okay. What's behind door number two? Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. I'm gonna be honest, this ending to this episode, amazing. Not the final boss, the final boss fight is kind of trash, but this going through the portal, this temple, in space? The moon is there, I have to assume space is... Is this an orbital? Never mind. This boss fight can fuck off. Hmm. This looks extraordinarily bad. It's not as bad as Beauty and the Beast, but having to constantly dodge what might as well be one-hit kill attacks because they turn the screen red, but what the hell, I've got two guns. I always thought this was a tricky fight until I noticed, uh, this right here. There's an invincibility power-up right in the center of the arena. This looks extraordinarily bad. All the atmosphere and design is still pretty cool, though. 